Like many Star Wars nerds, I guess I was excited at the prospect of EA losing its exclusive licensing of the Star Wars game media area, so it opened up possibilities for other producers to come in and try their hand at a triple A Star Wars game. And that's not to say that the games that EA have pushed out for Star Wars have been entirely terrible. I'm a big fan, for example, of the old Jedi Outcast slash Jedi Academy game series that was a pivotal part of my youth growing up when it came to Star Wars media. Those old games really set the bar for me in terms of what could be expected for a Star Wars game. Unfortunately, and I'm sure a lot of people will share my opinion on this, is that there just hasn't really been anything that came out in recent years outside of the Jedi Fallen Order slash Survivor games that has really tried to knock it out of the park. And I'm firmly of the belief that more is always better than less when it comes to Star Wars games. I'm always going to give them a try if I have the opportunity. Looking back at some of the old games that were in the PlayStation 1 era, like The Phantom Menace, really did touch a soft spot in my heart when it comes to nostalgia. Nostalgia, but I don't really think looking back those games were absolutely phenomenal, it was more just a case that we didn't have the breadth and variety of games available at our feet. Cue the new era. We have now got a game that has come out. Star Wars Outlaws was released only a couple of weeks ago and it's come from our wonderful, wonderful people over at Ubisoft. Now Ubisoft have their own reputation when it comes to creating AAA games in that they are very formulaic in their approach and there is a whole lot of bloat that gets introduced into their games. Still being the ever positive nerd that I am, I'm always willing to give things a try. Outlaws did get a lot of criticism before its release based on the AI and the graphics, which sometimes looked a little bit funky if taken out of context. And yes, the AI did act like it was dumber than a pile of bricks, occasionally just staring Vess clearly in the face and not doing any damage to her. My own perspective on the game after putting about 40 hours in is slightly different, I suppose. I wouldn't say that I rushed the plotline of the game by any stretch of the imagination. I spent plenty of hours exploring planets, doing side quests, taking on contracts, and probably gambling more than is a healthy amount within this game. That being said, there are some really valid criticisms about Star Wars Outlaws, I am sorry to say. I guess my chief concerns when playing this game came down to some of the core mechanics that just felt a little bit lacking. The combat feels like it tries to take inspiration from cover shooters, third person shooters, the likes of Uncharted, that sort of thing, but really it seems to be missing that little bit of oomph. One of my primary concerns with this is the way that the weapon system is introduced into the game. You get given Kay's blaster and it has a number of different modules and different effects so that you can do stealth takedowns and you can do stuff that takes out droids for example, but ultimately when I looked back on my playtime with the game, most of the time I was not really engaging in straight up gun warfare and even when I had the opportunity to steal some of the more powerful weapons that are limited drops, I just didn't care to engage with it. I didn't care about using a sniper rifle and I didn't care about using an E111 and I didn't care about taking up the rotary gun and blowing people down. In fact, I didn't even really use any thermal detonators or smokes. I found that most of the game could be tackled by just using your pistol and unfortunately for me it left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth because it didn't feel like I was actually enjoying the combat to the fullest. Now some people can turn around and say, well it was your choice Scribble, why didn't you choose to pick up those weapons? And it's because it just didn't feel fun to use. I don't care about picking up a weapon that's only got four shots in the chamber before I drop it. Every time I pick up one of these alternate weapons that you can find within the game, you'll go to climb a ladder and you'll drop it, which sends the wrong message, I feel. If this game had taken the approach that you can build up a roster of weaponry, perhaps break down different parts of weapons to create your own Franken gun that can, you can use continually over the long term, even if it has limited ammunition, you could still have it as a different equip, then maybe I would feel like there was a little bit more depth to the combat. The stealth elements in the same vein feel just a little bit half-baked. It's not that the stealth is bad, it, I actually found it to be far more enjoyable to see if I could sneak into a compound without being sighted, setting traps, disabling the cameras, all that sort of good business, and drawing enemies off one by one, but again it just feels like it's not completely fleshed out. There are things in the game that look like they make sense and then don't make sense. You can disable turrets and you can disable means of raising the alarm and then it'll get raised anyway, or you'll try to 
split off individual units and they'll come two by two, or sometimes they'll come one by one, or sometimes they won't move far enough along. It feels like that gameplay aspect just hasn't been hammered out into a fine piece of material just yet. It's just kind of a halfway house. And honestly, and I might be completely wrong on this because, let's face it, I'm just some sad anorak nerd who sits at home playing games and judging them based on my enjoyability of them. I don't have any experience in actually making a game, but from my own perspective, if Ubisoft maybe took the approach of let's make this a more linear experience and not try to create this open world format that we have currently, they'd be able to spend a little bit more developing time working on those finer aspects of the game. Because I don't want this I don't want to make this sound like there is nothing redeemable about this game. There is plenty to like about Star Wars Outlaws. When it does things well, it does things pretty well. There are aspects of this game that I really did enjoy. The faction aspect that they introduced, which was essentially getting the different syndicates and working on your reputation within those factions in order to raise your reputation within them and your your notoriety almost, was nice in concept and i liked that there was the influence of these various syndicates on the different planets at different varying degrees it's a nice touch and it makes the universe feel lived in the problem again is i don't feel like it went far enough it's all very well and good that when you've got an excellent reputation with the pikes you're able to go through their zones without any sort of rep repercussions that's great but why not when for example, you've got a wanted level with the Imperials. Can you not go to one of your syndicate factions that you've got excellent reputation with and you can request to be hidden by them and they can get rid of your wanted level? Or they come and see off some of the vying factions within the universe. Why is there not more of that interaction in the game world? There's far too much there that just feels like it's about as deep as a puddle and that is disappointing because we can see what could have been. Anybody that has played any sort of Ubisoft game in the past will be very familiar with their recipe for games. They create a massive open world that's supposed to wow and awe, and they try to make it feel lived in. The problem is, is you just get bombarded with all these minuscule quest lines that have no real soul to them. There's nothing behind these little quest lines. You'll get tiny little collectibles, hundreds of them throughout the game that are supposed to amount to something. Different bits of gear or things that you can use to craft components to improve your ship, or your speeder bike, or your pistol, but none of it feels like it matters. And ultimately, it feels like filler content in a series of Dragon Ball Z, where you're just like spending four episodes with Goku screaming trying to transform into Super Saiyan 3 when you just want to see the fight. Let's get some more of the fight in the game, guys. Honestly, the parts that I really enjoyed about this game were, strangely enough, the aspects where Kay was not the highlight. It feels like her character growth was relatively limited compared to some of the other characters in the game. I very much enjoyed getting to know K2SO, and you could see a lot of the foreshadowing within the game, and I'm not going to talk about spoilers here, but he does a good job of that with that character. He's endearing. Nyx is incredibly cute, and to this day I maintain that Star Wars Outlaws is in essence just an escort game. Everybody knows that there are plenty games out there in the world that have escort missions where you have to escort a person throughout a plotline and if they die, that's the end of the game. My opinion is that Star Wars Outlaws is actually a game about Nyx and k -Vess is actually just the escort mission throughout the entire game. If she's gone, then game over because we cannot see how Nyx's story progresses further. He's very cute, he's very endearing and has some combat application and stealth application that's done very very well. It can be added that the support cast are just character tropes that you see in many different settings for both novels and fantasy. Ank is a demolitions expert, and guess what? They like to blow stuff up, and that's all they care about. And that's, you know, it's fine and everything, but where's the extra layer of depth? You spend half the game trying to put together a team in order to pull off your big heist, but then in the end there's just not enough interaction between the side cast to make you really care about them. Gadik is another example of this. He's clearly got a background, a history with k -Vess. But we don't ever dive into that because there's too much time spent just running around the world doing relatively aimless things. Another aspect of Outlaws that I did actually enjoy is its ability to feel very Star Wars in essence. As you progress through the game and you go through the different planets and conduct different contracts and missions on those planets, you do get that feeling of, this is Star Wars. 
You're able to see Boba Fett. You can see Han trapped in carbonite. You meet Jabba the Hutt. You see Darth Vader. You see Lando Calrissian. Hashtag spoilers all round. I don't care, guys. Complain about me in the comments. A lot of it feels like this is the universe that we are very familiar with, and I'm not even touching on all of those aspects here. It does that part very, very well. There's one scene in particular late on in the game that brings us the wonderful Darth Vader, and it just happens to be the scene that steals the entire game. It is a badass scene that is done very well. It begs the question though, why do we not have more of that and less fetch quests? I don't understand it. Of course there are bugs as well, AI acts like an absolute moron half the time, and that is really disappointing to see. When it comes to the control system in the game, I split my time between using mouse and keyboard and testing out this new Easy SMX controller that was sent to me for a review. I'm not going to go too much into the details on it, but it's quite a decent controller at the price point. It's able to connect to all modern consoles, Xbox, it's able to connect to a Nintendo Switch at the Switch of a button on the back, which is quite useful. It's got some RGB on the front, which I think makes people play their games just that little bit better, and is able to change the controller's trigger system into here triggers at the slide of a button. It also has a couple of programmable back buttons on the rear of the pad, which I found personally to just accidentally hit more frequently than not. I've got my own nicks here over my shoulder. If you'd like to give this Easy SMX controller a try, I do actually have a 20% discount voucher in the description down below, so give that a try if you're in the market for a brand new controller. When I check my quest log now post-game, I can see that there are a number of contracts that I haven't yet completed, and the problem is, is that I do not care to try and go out there and finish them. I finished the main plotline, why do I care about these side quests? There's nothing really engaging me. I'm not able to go ahead and talk to these people and feel like I have any deep kind of connection to them after the fact. Nothing seems to matter too much around do how well you build up your faction reputation. There's no long lasting friendships that you make. Why is it not that when you go out on this reputation building quest that you actually have choices to recruit experts from the various factions in the game and they form part of your crew and they influence the story in a real meaningful way when you go to take on your heist? That would add a large layer of replayability. I beg Ubisoft to reconsider this formula that they have where it's just a big open world filled with nothing. The last thing that I really want to talk about is the implementation of the space combat and exploration. For a large part, I think it does look pretty, and I think that can be said for a lot of the game. It looks pretty, but unfortunately, it just doesn't quite hit the mark. I understand. Fleet combat is a big part of Star Wars, but you really have to nail it. And the ships out there when you're flying around, I think the combat is fine, but a little bit too basic in terms of what you can actually accomplish. And then the exploration part of it just feels like you're wandering around aimlessly with no idea what you're looking for. So I found space to be more of an inconvenience and a way of introducing loading screens to the game than I did find it to be an enjoyable part of the game. Now I might have a different perspective to other people on this, but for me, I dreaded the idea of going out into space just because I would like an easier way of being able to take myself over to, you know, Tatooine and then go back to Kajimi. Instead, now I have to go out into orbit and then go into the hyperdrive, and the hyperdrive looks very nice and everything, but we don't need just little aspects of the game that are just fluff and almost feel like it's a bit of an afterthought. I would like that space combat and that space exploration to be something that we enjoy. But still, overall, I don't want to make it sound like I'm just moaning about this game because it is ultimately still a game I spent 40 hours on. Now, I wouldn't pay full price for this, but I'm quite happy to have spent a week or two playing it and using Ubisoft's premium package of 15 bucks. I feel like I got my money's worth out of that. Now, it remains to be seen if I'll renew that membership when it comes to the expansion pack that they release, but overall I would say a 6 or a 7 out of 10 is a relatively fair score for this game. A lot of the time the game can look very, very beautiful, and a lot of the time it looks like a sack of potatoes. I guess it's just how we have to accept AAA games at this moment in time. It's peculiar to me. But I'm still hopeful that sometime in the near future we will be able to get more and more AAA content within the Star Wars IP that makes us excited to play games again in Star Wars. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. See you all in the next video. Peace out, and may the Force be with you.